Good morning and welcome to the Wax Wake Up for Friday, December 1st. I'm Christy Matino. With the House expected to vote on the expulsion of Congressman George Santos, his likely ouster could open the door for more efforts by lawmakers to use this rare procedure to punish their colleagues. On Thursday, Santos denounced the efforts to remove him from office as setting a dangerous standard for moving forward to oust a sitting lawmaker who has not been convicted. Every member expelled in history of this institution has been convicted of crimes or Confederate turncoats guilty of treason. Neither of those apply to me, but here we are. On what basis does this body feel that precedent must be changed for me? Expulsion is the harshest form of punishment a lawmaker can receive from their colleagues, making it rare to come by in the lower chamber. But if expelled, Santos would become only the sixth lawmaker to be removed from the House in U.S. history. The House is set to vote today, with Santos already conceding defeat over the weekend and predicting he will be removed from office. And the great debate between Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and California Governor Gavin Newsom was held last night. The two governors faced off on many topics, including book banning. And DeSantis came with props to make his point clear that he believes in parental choice when it comes to education. So this is a book that's in some of the schools in California, Florida. This is not consistent with our standards called gender queer. I, it's some of it's blacked out. You would not probably be able to put this on air. This is pornography. It's cartoons. It's aimed at children uh, and it's wrong. DeSantis claimed it was an instance of a book taught in California's public schools, but banned from Florida's curriculum. However, Newsom fired back saying DeSantis is taking the book banning a bit too far. You are on a book banning binge, your state. 1,406 books, 3,362 in this country. You didn't answer, what about those no books? <laughs> That's not, we don't provide for K through third grade education, that kind of curriculum. It's just made up. These guys make it up. The debate was a chance for both governors to introduce themselves to a general election audience, although DeSantis is the only declared candidate for president. And more chaos took place in the White House briefing room on Thursday. Our Naomi Lim tells us what happened and how Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre handled the situation. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre shut down her briefing after it was disrupted by foreign correspondent Simon Atiba. Can, can I ask you a follow-up on Angola? Can I? What, one question. It's so surprising um, that you don't so, take, if you are receiving sorry. an African leader, you can't take a question from an African okay, journalist. We, we can, we can end I can't. Sorry, it's, I, it's, I have one question. Basically, um, John, Senator Marco Rubio. It's not about ending the briefing. I want to ask an African question. Sorry. Because sorry. I am receiving an African leader. Sorry, I just ask a question. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. All right. We... We can end this briefing if it's not going to be respectful here. Chris. That's what I'm saying. You're okay. receiving an African okay. leader and you don't take questions. Thanks, everybody. I have a question about gas prices. Oh, thanks, everybody. Can we do one about right. the poly gas you. prices? Atiba and the White House have clashed in the past, but whether this latest incident helps him get his press access reinstated remains to be seen. I'm Naomi Lim for The Washington Examiner. And President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden lit the national Christmas tree at the White House Ellipse on Thursday night. This year's tree is a 40-foot Norway spruce from West Virginia, which toppled over ahead of the lighting ceremony on Tuesday. But no worries, a crane lifted that tree back up and the century-old tradition continued. This is a great tradition. One, as has been pointed out already, we've honored over 100 years where presidents and the people come together to usher in the holiday season. We began another holiday season. Let's remember how blessed we are as Americans. And earlier this week, the First Lady also shared the new Christmas decorations at the White House, which also featured an ice skating rink on the South Lawn that will be open throughout December. Thanks for joining us this morning on The Wex Wake Up. Be sure to give us a follow online and on social media so you stay in the know of all those headlines trending in politics.